today I'm gonna to go over the first changes I'm gonna to make to the infraction. Um, starting off with the camera mount. Um, this is something I've struggled with for a long time. I've probably made 25 different versions of, of camera mounts from using lots of Gorilla Tape, really, uh, and uh, wire, aluminum, all kinds of different stuff. GoPros are heavy, plus adding a weight of mounting it and having it safe and everything, plus stability. Also, I'd like to have kind of a first-person view, like if you were playing a video game. Um, and so I've been trying to achieve that for a long time. So I've got a new idea that I'm going to try on this infraction. Uh, here's the last infraction I had. This was actually a total infraction. This is the only one I've ever totaled. Uh, the body looks fine, but I actually was trying to do a speed run. It smacked a curb so hard it completely bent the frame, uh, shattered the rear end, knocked the differential out of the rear end, and I couldn't find it. That's how bad it was. So I uh, still have a body. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is, look, this is another iteration of one of my camera mounts that you can see right there. And this actually wasn't a fail. This worked out pretty good for a while, um, but it don't give me that uh, first-person view or any options, really, for a viewing angle. Um, so... What I'm going to do is I am going to take this piece of carbon fiber, though, and I'm going to install it on the other one. It kind of makes it solid, and it looks nice when it's clean also. Uh, you can see where I didn't even realize I still had some light bars on here and stuff that could be reused. Uh, but I've got something, a different product for that. Uh, I put lots of lights on my infractions because uh, really my favorite time to run them is on the street uh, during the summertime or whatnot, early, early in the morning, just at dusk when it's starting to turn uh daylight or whatnot and that's a good time to have lights especially when you're on the road so i generally run some emergency flasher lights and then i'm going to try to put some headlights and tail lights in there as well um but uh, for today i'm just going to be handling in the beginning just the flashing lights to start with because they're pretty easy so uh this will be coming off of here and going on to the new infraction speaking of which my idea that I had to mount the camera to this guy. Um, so a part of many of my iterations of camera mounts has been using is the Insta360. Speaking of trying to find the unicorn mount. Insta360 makes something called a unicorn mount. And it's a little rod that comes out. I think it's about 12 inches long. Um, so it should come out to, I don't know, right about here. Um, but any little bit of wobble on that thing, and it really shows in the video especially. Um, so trying to come up with a way to make a solid mount. Now, I did buy an all-metal mount once that I used on the Basher. It's super heavy, so I couldn't use it on this. But it really made a difference. Metal, I don't care how tight you get that plastic, how thick it is. It flexes, it moves. Metal's really the way to go. Um, so I have this five millimeter titanium rod that I've had for, I don't know, a while. I plan on making a super lightweight spool out of it, I'm hoping. Um, but the reason I have it, well, that's why I have it, but I haven't used it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it to use. And I have these, I don't even know what you'd call them. These guys here, uh, I got them in order to use them for a, to make a sway bar out of them. But basically... Uh, you're able to put your rod or tube in there and then tighten it down with the set screws, just like on a pinion. Um, and this didn't fit. It was like three millimeter, but it was so massive. It was so overkill for an RC. I was actually able to drill it out to five millimeters. So now that sets in there. So my first idea was, is I was just kind of sticking this in between the two bars and I was taping it. And I was like, you know, that works okay, but still has a lot of flex. And then I was like, well, I could wire it or zip tie it or something to the bars that would help and then i remembered i had these guys i grabbed one out and i was like okay well it don't fit let me drill it out and i realized that it makes a good fit so i got two of them and i ended up making these little brackets um to hold it now when it comes to fabricating parts especially with carbon fiber uh you want to make it out of something else first you want to get your basic design down so i bought this foam board from uh, Hobby Lobby. You can use uh, cardboard. That's what a lot of people do. Um, I just like the foam board. Um, so this is what I use. And I made my basic shape first. Um, 
where I need my hole to be and how it sets on there. And as you can see, once I got the shape I liked, no, Project Jump Mail, major suspension upgrades, taking our Jeep from a mail delivery vehicle. So as you can see, it fits on there. Uh, let me turn it. You can see how it fits everything perfectly. So I made that first, and then I traced it. I made one full part. And I, what I used for that is this, some, this might even be a half millimeter here. Let me measure it. Those carbon fiber is strong. I think people underestimate it sometimes and, and, and use thicker than what they need. But um, if you're buying a quality carbon fiber, that is. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this is one point. Yeah. So one and a half mil millimeters is the thickness I used. Um, reason I like that thickness is because it's lightweight. I think it's strong enough for just holding something down, especially. Um, and I can even cut it with shears. So um, I got a couple different sets of shears that I use. I use those guys. And it can get most of my cut done and pretty straight. And the, the deeper areas I can't get to, obviously, uh, I will just use uh, a Dremel. Uh, but I prefer these because they don't make no dust. There's no mess. Uh, easy cleanup. But... To get this stuff, there's a company called uh, Composites. Uh, what is it? Pro Composite? Pro Tech Composite, maybe? Where they sell their scrap. So you can buy like a half a pound of scrap for $25. Uh, you don't get to pick what you get. Pro Tech Composites is what I think it is. You don't get to pick what you get. You can put it in the comments and kind of ask, and they do pretty good. Um, so I like to buy a half pound of it at a time. And you get a whole bunch, you know, a whole bunch of veneer, which is actually pretty useful too. But you get some of this stuff, some thicker stuff, and I make a lot of parts. You'll notice on the channel, I make a lot of stuff out of this carbon fiber. This was a much bigger sheet, and I just keep cutting away and cutting away and trying not to waste as much as I can. Um, so next, I get my first completed part done. And once I'm completely happy with it, I cut myself out three more. And when you're doing that, you got to make sure that you're thinking of what side it's going to go on and inside or outside, because this is a four-piece thing. Um, so we've got a right and a left. So it, here's a right and a right. So when you're making them, you want the faces to, to touch each other. Whatever you want to stick out, the shiny side in this case, I wanted that to stick out. So the rough side have to have to go inside. And then the other two will do the same thing. I stuck all four of them together. Uh, with two-way tape. Once I had all four of them together, then I started uh, shaping my part the rest of the way, drilling my holes, and getting everything ready. Uh, so I've already got one piece installed here. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out these camera angles, what works best for you guys. Let's see. Um, oops. Oops. Just swap cameras here so I can show you. Okay, so right there, as you can see, this is one installed. Uh, I just used two screws. Now, because I'm going to be encasing it, what I was worried about, because I want to be able to remove this. This is basically a street basher, and the GoPro really does make it handle like crap. Okay, so this is the left side, the other left side. So this is going to box it in to where you can't get to the set screws. So what I've decided to do is I've just made a window in the bottom of the body, which you won't see, right there. And I can use that window um, to set my set screws so this don't spin. Um, hopefully, if it all works out, this should be a really solid mount. So I'm going to proceed with putting some more of that together. Okay. Focus. Okay, so transition back. Okay. So what I've decided with the channel is I'm going to 
start including more content. Um, I have, I was going through my cloud service and I have something like a hundred hours of unused footage. I have cars that have been on the channel that never, I made a bunch of videos for that never even made it to the channel. Um, I had a low C laser nut that I made like four or five videos for and it ended up getting stolen out of my truck. And so I, I never showed it to you guys. You guys never got to see it. Um, so what I've realized is uh, I just need to get you guys involved because I like to be creative. This is probably my favorite part. One of the reasons why I like the infraction so much is I, I can make, there's a lot of parts I can make for it, modify and make changes. That and crawlers too. Um, so there'll be parts that are just bolt on. There'll be stuff I just make. It'll be, you know, I'm always working on a project of some kind. Um, and, I, and I don't share that with you guys. So if I would have been doing that up to this point, I would be a master at making a YouTube video. I would know all my camera angles. I would know all this stuff. I would know what makes good content. Uh, as opposed to just being super selective and then putting something out once a month or something, you know, when I'm making a whole bunch more stuff that I think other people will be interested in. Um, so that's where this is coming from. So if I've got some videos that are, I don't know, not that great here in a little while, I apologize. I'm trying. I just got to figure out what works and what don't work. And the, the only way I've, I've been kind of playing with this for a couple of years now, and the only way I'm going to get anywhere is if I just dive in both feet and get you guys involved um, all the way through the process. So, all right, so I've got that one on there. That's looking good. Um, it's screwed right up. I'm using uh, three by six flathead screws. Um, these are some ones I bought off Amazon. They're stainless steel, and they're terrible. Um, Anytime you get them in a situation where, I don't know, maybe they're just getting slightly cross-threaded or whatever, they easily break off into the screw. They're not strong. Um, so I don't use them on anything structural-wise. Uh, if I'm just mounting something because they've got this big flat head on them, if I'm just mounting them to something, I use them. Uh, but otherwise... So Steering, suspension, stuff like that. No. Uh, I've kind of stopped using stainless. These guys have broke me of that. I realized the black uh, screws are actually stronger. The steel ones are actually a better metal. Okay. That's a good one. Let's see if this rod fits. I don't know about you guys, but I use these things without a handle all the time. I don't know about anybody else. But... And I got a handle here. I try to remember to use it, but like in this case, it wouldn't fit. So best for me to just get it most of the way in and try to zip it in the rest of the way with the cordless. All right, so here we go. It's a tight fit. Oh, oh, that is solid. That has no play. Okay, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, let's see. Where is other plates? All right, so I'm going to finish zipping the rest of this together, and then I will get back with you when I got it put the rest away and cover uh, the lights and stuff that I've got for it. Okay, so I've got, oh, sorry about that, lost my camera for a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, I've got every, I've got the camera mount completely installed. And let me say, would I recommend this? Absolutely not. Uh, it is crazy heavy, but the end result is pretty nice. Uh, I got the carbon fiber plate off the old body here and got it installed to the bed let me show you how cool it looks though it looks awesome so let me swap cameras here
Well, the light is terrible, but um, you can see the carbon fiber per plate on there. And then I also I bought a sheet of grade five titanium off of Amazon. Uh, just a thin sheet of it. It wasn't very much money, <clears throat> and I've been using it to make a lot of brackets out of. Um, so I've got this riveted on as well. They're real easy to remove with a, <clears throat> a drill bit. They just come right off. So, But any place like where I'd have to use a nut, uh, and I can use these, I, I have been. They're aluminum, and they're, they weigh a lot less. Um, but got the bracket installed, um, and it's got, I mean, no movement. Uh, the one thing I think is interesting is the titanium bar <clears throat> actually had flex and until I set the set screws. And once I set the set screws, it was, uh, it didn't have no flex anymore. So that's pretty cool. But <clears throat> I think it looks awesome. I adhered a piece of foam to it. I don't know if that does anything or not, but it's there. Um, so <clears throat> that's the install of the camera mount. I'm curious to see how it goes. If it works out for me or not, swap back. Okay, so we have got the camera mount done. Now, as far as body is concerned, uh, we have some spots that have rubbed through, actually already rubbed back through the um, Gorilla Tape I put on there. So I got to figure that out, probably stiffen the springs as much weight as I'm putting on here anyways gonna have to uh and then once i get that part figured out what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take some of this uh, this gray and blue mix it together and try to come up with a color that kind of goes with this <clears throat> i'm gonna airbrush all these spots on the inside um and they'll, they should probably blend in because the matte finishes on the outside um so because you can tell it's matte even where it's cleared off um that should take care of those, and should blend in pretty well. And then also, I don't know why, maybe they were having some kind of rub problem, but uh, they cut all these uh, all the way around. Did a horrible job. Um, so I'm going to clean all that up, and then, as I mentioned earlier, I'm big on lights as far as my street basher, anyways. Um, so I got my emergency lights here. These obviously do all kinds of different. Um, functions that you can control with a remote. But I'll put one on the back, one on the front. <clears throat> I'll cut a little slit right here. This one I guess I could run through here, but in the front I'll have to cut a slit anyways. Um, big enough. I'll stick it under, I'll cut the slit underneath where this goes, where that goes right there, and I'll feed it through, and then I'll put this over it, and that'll allow me to have my wire as well. So that's my plan there. And then how I'm going to hook it up is, because <clears throat> that's the worst part, is hooking and unhooking. Uh, so I'm going to run this. I got this off AliExpress, and it's like a, a six and a one. Not that I'm going to use six. Um, let's see if I can bring that up closer to the camera so you can see what that is. It was like a dollar, two dollars or something. I bought two of them just to see if I like them. But this is going to allow me to mount it somewhere higher up on the body that's easy to get to to plug my lights in and out. <clears throat> so that's my plan there. Um, and then I've got these headlights that look crazy to me. I mean, they look awesome, insane. First RC headlights I've seen with a, uh, a heat sink on it. So you can see the heat sink, but they got a stupid design that I don't understand why. I can't think of one reason in any part of RC where it makes sense, they have capable of 8.4 volts. They hook you up with a balance port, which is a horrible way to wire. So you got your balance port um, and go up to 8.4 volts. But your switch, which also has power run, it has all three going to it. Uh, um, your switch is 5 volts only. So I don't know of any ESCs that are 5 volts. I don't even think your OEM ones are 5 volts. I think they're 6 at least. So, But the headlights can handle up to 7.4 volts. So I may just hook them up without a switch and not worry about the switch. Or I don't know if I can put wire some resistors into it or, or what. Um, then I'm going to 
I can only find three of them right now, so I'm just going to do the rear to start with, but I've got these five millimeter spacers, um, and they kind of mess up how they look a little bit with the, the, the Hoons tires on it, but once you put GRPs on there, it looks just perfect. Um, so I'll put those on, and what else do I got for it? Let's see. Uh, I'm going to take a stab at installing the voltage meter so I can see what the voltage is from the controller. Um, and what else? Oh, and I have a Scorched RC. This, this guy ought to be fun. Uh, Scorched RC titanium skip plate. And it's basically just designed to create sparks. So be throwing sparks going down the road. That would be pretty cool. Um, let's see. I think that's it for the video. If I run across anything interesting with the lighting or anything else, uh, I'll, I'll share it with you guys. Otherwise, I think that's it for now. I'll be constantly doing stuff to this thing. Uh, I'll got to do fans and all kinds of other stuff. Um, I don't know. I may gear it down enough where I don't have to worry about it because I'm not after a top speed. I just want to get there quickly, and but I want good battery life. So I think my final gear ratio on this is probably going to be – cannot remember what the spur gear is from the factory, but uh, probably – had a 16 tooth pinion gear on. I think I'll probably end up at 20 is probably where I'll end up. Um, oh, and also, this is torn here and over here. So I'm not, oh, right here. I'm not too sure how I'm going to handle that just yet. Oh, I guess I probably took it off the camera. I keep thinking of the little camera. So the front piece is torn. Uh, I'm not too sure I'm going to fix that, but I am. Um, oh, more carbon fiber I'm going to be using. Obviously, I use a lot of that. But on the body itself, uh, I'm going to add some carbon fiber side pieces because they keep getting all the stuff inside. But what else I'm going to use for that, and you guys are going to probably laugh at me over this next thing. is I bought this, these sheets of PET, and basically they are flexible. They, they, they don't shatter, okay? But they're they're moldable too. Uh, so I can heat these up and bend them and they'll hold that form. So I'm gonna make myself some internal mud flaps on the inside of the body, and I'll actually attach them to the body. Um, that will help keep a lot of that debris out. I kind of did it once before with like a piece of aluminum or something, and it worked out pretty well, uh, especially on the back. But uh, this is the way to go. So I'll be using some of this as well to try to keep the inside clean. Um, but yeah, that's that's my thoughts for now. Um, aside from that, thanks for tuning in, and uh, obviously, if you got some questions or whatever, put them in the call in the comments. Give me a like and a subscribe, and. Sorry if the video is kind of choppy and not that organized. I'm, I will get better at it. Uh, that's why I didn't do these kinds of videos that much before. So, But I do a lot of this. This is a big part of what I do in the hobby. And I, I enjoy creating these parts and solving problems that I create for myself for the most part. But uh, And just making stuff better. So, all right. Thanks for watching.